Thank you for attending my presentation. Today I will talk about human branding practices during the New Kingdom, a form of a control between metaphor and reality. Looking at the external north wall of Medina Tabu, we can find a very interesting scene of a celebration of the victory of the Ramses of Ramses III on the people of the sea. Why is this scene so interesting? It's uh, interesting before, because um, here, in addition to what we found find normally uh, in this kind of presentation of prisoners to the baron or recounting of the trophies, um, here we have the registration of the prisoners uh, made by some scribes, but we also have a physical registration of these prisoners because the scribes are writing on the shoulders of the prisoners but how are they writing on their body if we read the text of the papyrus series the first concerning the libyan campaign of the same pharaoh we could possibly find an answer here the leaders are branded with the name of the pharaoh and the woman and the children receive the same treatment. This action seems to have an important role, making them serfs of the pharaoh. To better understand this practice and the Medina Tabut scene, it could be useful to analyze the cattle branding, the practice but also the purpose of this action. Uh, yes, because the practice of cattle branding um, using an hot iron is a technique attested in Egypt since the Old Kingdom. And this technique is due uh, to the need to affix marks as a sign of ownership. Um, this was an evident sign of economic control since each symbol was used as a mark of possession by institutions and privates. The importance of this pra practice and um, his increasing during the New Kingdom is also indicated by the existence um, at, during the New Kingdom of some uh, titles connected uh, with his, uh, this activity that is also attested by some scenes of brandings and some image, images of branding branded animals and also written sources that uh, can help us to um, understand the, uh, the use of these marks. Um, about the, um, the titles, so we can mention the bearer of the branding instrument of the Lord of the Two Lands that is documented in Tsipari's tomb in Saqqara and also the uh, bearer of the branding instrument that is attested by uh, the papyrus Wilbur. As I said, we can find um, scenes, branding scenes in different Theban tombs, um, the, uh, in uh, Theban tombs like, uh, that, like those of uh, Uzerhat, Kenamun, Nebamun and Hui. In the tomb of Hui, a scene now very poorly preserved, represented all phases of the cattle branding activity. Here we can see a cartouche shaped mark with the name of the pharaoh Tutankhamun represented twice. The first is um, in a brazier in front of uh, scribes taking notes, two scribes taking notes, probably related to the cattle registration. And the second is on his box next to a bull uh, waiting to be marked. Here we can see two scenes coming from different tombs the tomb of Nebamun and the tomb of Kanamun. Rectangular irons extended by a series of punches are visible in the fire branding scene representing on two registers from the tomb of Nebamun. In this scene, a man is, showing, is shown eating up a branding iron in a brazier, 
and two capital are uh, marked and one is tied is tied up waiting to receive the same treatment what is interesting here is that we can see the brazier and um, that we can see uh, very well the shape of uh, the shape of the mark um, in the scene from the tomb of Kenamun uh, we can see three marks placed uh, on a casket probably the casket used to transport and to preserve them uh, one of these uh, signs or one of these marks um, has the, sh the, the shape of the cartouche of Amenhotep II. Uh, another one has the shape of an eye, and a third uh, bear the inscription Perunefer. The branding mark uh, with uh, in the eye shape is also visible in the Huzerhat uh, tomb painting. Um, it is possible that this eye shape. Uh, I shaped mark is an abbreviated form for the word Eru, a word which designates a specific type of tax, um, a tax on cattle, and in this context, um, this tax could indicate the tithe of um, the tithe of Amun. What is interesting to note in this representative scene is the presence of the presence of the brazier and also the possibility to uh, see to looking at the shape of these brandings a shape that is uh, related to uh, some institutions or uh, to some uh, to the purpose of the brandings apart from the actual mar marking scenes that we presented um, there are not many representation of marks on the bodies of animals. Uh, one of these scenes um, comes from the southwest, southwest corner of the first courtyard of Francis II in the Temple of Luxor. Here it is possible to observe a group of oxen marked on their backs. The context is that, is that of a procession, a procession during a festival. Um, the cattle are trimmed and fattened for the occasion, and it is possible to recognize two kinds of brands. Uh, one on the left um, is visible on five on them, and the other one on the right um, is represented on three others. These brands corresponded possibly to the owner institutions that offered them for this festival. Uh, we know, for example, that the Wap priests of Sehmet were responsible for affixing the marks um, to form the herds potentially intended for sacrifice, and among these animals were chosen the actual victims. Another interesting and unusual example is that of the Wadi Mahamid bulls, some petroglyph uh, from from the region of El Kab, now destroyed, uh, representing two fattened bulls, probably sacrificial bulls, facing one each other and branded on their back, with a sign resembling the hieroglyphic man. This is the same hieroglyphic probably that we saw um, in the Nebuchadnezzar tomb. Once again, this mark might mean that these bulls belong to a large farming estate of the crown or to a temple domain. To better understand the purpose of these marks, we can analyze the written documentation that provides us with some additional information. We will present some um, passages from the admonition of Ipuer, a text from the second intermediate period which describes a country which fell into chaos, uh, but also some provisions on, of uh, the Oromad's decree, and a hieratic papyrus from the end of the New Kingdom that offer uh, some interesting uh, example, an interesting example of illegal appropriation of cattle. In the admonition of Ipuer, we can uh, we can read: um, "Behold, cattle are left to stray, and there is no one to gather them together. Each man fetches for himself those that are branded with his name."
In this short sentence, the importance of affixing property signs for organizational reasons is, um, is explained. Um, with this method, owners can recognize their animals and bring them back to their estates. So this is very interesting to understand the purpose of the branding. This organizational and economic function is also evident in the cases of uh, embezzlement. Um, there are uh, cases of fixing marks during seizure of third-party properties and complaints brought by the real owners. Effectively, we can find something in the Horamat decree, decree that concerns misappropriation and misuse of mark in order to be able to carry out the operation of inspection and collecting the skins of the pharaoh herds. Uh, this device uh, aims to put an end to dishonesty of certain soldiers who size the skins of cattle be belonging to the pharaoh herds by affixing their, their marks, thus making these skins impossible to find and preventing the inspection of, ca uh, the inspection of cattle in the country. And as I said, um, a hieratic papyrus from the end of the New Kingdom that is uh, unfortunately fragmentary, um, seems to offer another example of illegal appropriation of cattle. Um, I'm talking about the, um, the papyrus kept at the Auguste Grasset Museum in Varzy, France. Uh, this document was probably a minute of a legal archive concerning two cases. Uh, the first, the first of these cases, was um, is dealing with, with, were dealing with falsification of marks on small livestock. In this text, we can read, um, uh, we can read, he caused the scrap marks to be erased. He grabbed the scrap palette in his hand and made a an rude sign in which he traced a dune sign. What you marked are all the small cattle that belong to me, with this mark, which means sustainable be Heliopolis, example of the design of mark. We note a particular attention and precision in the words of choice, such a separate use of the verb ab and the substantive abu to indicate the action of marking and the marking iron. Moreover, Given the crucial importance of the form of the mark in this context of complaint uh, concerning a theft, uh, the text indicates the meaning of the mark and gives a graphic reproduction, um, a graphic reproduction of the of the mark, um, in order to be able to carry out the surveys. Um, it's interesting to note that the late documentation provides additional data to support the importance of branding the earth as a means of identification and control of the cattle. The analysis of the Matic document relating to transactions and purchase, sale or rental of cattle allowed, um, allowed the scholar Eugene Cruz Uribe to note that each registered animal was carefully described in the sources which preferably, preferably mentioned sex, state of health, pregnancy in the case of the cow, economic utility, name carried by the animal, as well as the possible presence and the form of the brand. These marks were often linked to the names of deities, which is explained, according to the author, by the possible association of the owner of the animal with the cult of a certain deity, or simply by the use of symbol of common, uh, symbols common at the time. In addition, this practice could be extended to other animals, such as donkeys, which transfer, con which transfer contacts mentioning the type of marks and its location are attested. It is possible to assume that uh, the existence of directors of these brands, even if they are not being uh, found for the moment. In some museum collections um, are preserved branding irons um, that we can relate to this practice. The Munich Museum iron, in particular, appears quite similar to the objects represented in the tomb of Hui and Kanamon mentioned above. 
uh, which uh, with the twisted handle and the various shades of the mark at the end, uh, like symbols in relation to deities, barons, or institutions. Another example from the British Museum bears the symbol of a lion's head, probably being connected to the domain of a temple connected with a cult of the goddess Sehmet, as pointed out above. There was a connection between this goddess and the use of branding marks. Okay, but what do we know about capital branding? So coming at the end of the first part of this presentation, we can say that metal marks were used to imprint symbols on animal bodies, especially bulls or donkeys. Um, a brazier was used to eat the branding irons. Marks could have various shape, some of which have the appearance of a cartouche. The importance of branding is for organizational and economic reasons. The use of brands as visible sign of ownership and control. And specific terms were used to describe this practice. Ab for the action and abu for the object of the, uh, for the brand. Bearing in mind the results of the analysis of the capital branding practice, we can consider it a starting point for studying the sources dealing with this practice applied to you. Several written sources from the New Kingdom seem to allude to fire branding of people and especially of prisoners of war, but the allusion of this practice is sometimes only a metaphor for something else. Unfortunately, we don't have any archaeological source about uh, human branding. We only have one, uh, one scene uh, from a royal context and uh, several writ uh, written sources. The Papyrus there is the first that we presented at the beginning of this uh, conversation. Uh, is a really interesting source about um, about this practice. What is uh, this papyrus? This papyrus is um, a very long text uh, on which the pharaoh, the pharaoh Ramses III, evokes the main events of his reign and the benefits established by him for several temples of the country. Following the Libyan campaign of the year 11, he reports having brought the prisoners to Egypt for employing them as servant or as a, so a soldier. In this text, we find the use of the verb ab, to mark, applied to women, men and children. Uh, these people were organized in group and received equal treatment, including the marking with the name of the pharaoh. So here the organizational value of this action is, um, is really evident. A similar treatment is described by the same pharaoh in a more concise text inscribed on the wall of the second court of the Medina Tabu Temple as a celebration of the, of the Libyan campaign of the year 5. Here, as we can read in the text, uh, the leaders of the Libyans were settled and organized into communities, in strongholds, and branded with the mighty name of His Majesty. Here the inscription seems seem to allude to the same operation described in the Papyrus Aris the first, even if they differ in the choice of words referring to the marking. In the Papyrus Aris the first is used the, uh, the verb abu, uh, a relevant word in a branding context, as we underlined above. But here is used together with the word menesh, while in Medina Tabu, with the same meaning, is used only menesh. The word ab refers specifically to the fire branding, as it can be deduced also from its determinative. The word menesh, mostly used as a noun, but here is clearly a verb, Conversely, does not allude to the use of fire, and its first meaning is simply that of the cartouche. For this reason, 
one could suggest that this word is used to refer to the cartouche shape of the iron, used on the skin of prisoners or in general to the shape of the mark affixed, without specification on the technique of application. It should be noted that in the Papyrus Series the first, the two terms are used together, thus probably underlining that thanks to the fire branding, the name of the victorious pharaoh has been affixed. The text of Medine Tabu, therefore, simply omits the word Ab and gives more relevance to the royal cartouche printed by the king on the vanquished enemies. It is interesting to note that we can also find in literary contexts uh, the action of branding humans. Um, here we are in the Papyrus series uh, number 5, which describes the state of mind of a soldier at the end of a military campaign. Uh, the author mentions the Shemezu escort, which at the end of the fight received a marks. In this context, even if uh, there are no precise references, it can be assumed that the marked were part of the prisoners put into service of the army as Shemezu, according to a common practice of the time. The stylistic choice to relate the Ab mark with the Shem burn as a manifestation of the uh, power of a moon evokes, through a metaphor, the submission to the will of the god. So it is interesting this double use of the verb ab because it can help to help us to introduce another interesting source. Indeed, um, the verb ab can have a figurative meaning of um, earmark. An example of this use can be found in the prayer to Thoth contained in another passage of the Papyrus Anastasi, uh, number 5. Here are mentioned children who are placed after Thoth in order to put them on the right path of the pro profession of the scribe. Another interesting uh, allusion to this use of the verb ab um, could be, can be found in the Blessing of Ta on Ramses III, a text that is known by a multiple uh, series of versions. Here we present the version of Apu Simba that is the most complete for this part. Um, the purpose of the king's speech here is the celebration. He described his benefits accomplished in favor of the god uh, of the god of Memphis, and ends uh, his list of deeds with the image of the marking of his people and enemies. In this context, it is a metaphor that uses the image of marking to indicate the influence exerted on the population of Egypt and the whole world of Tatanen. This example confirms uh, the ideological strength of this practice. On the papyrus Chastabeti the first, there is a later example of the using abu, abut, in this context, with a metaphorical meaning, but in the in completely another context, because here we are in the context of a romantic relationship. Um, in this poetic context, the man borrows the imagination from the word of breeding and compares himself to a bull tamed by his wife, who caught and marked him uh, like uh, like a bull. In this context, there is a play uh, a play on words between the brand abet and the seal chetem. By affixing them, the man becomes the property of the beloved. And it is also necessary to notice that that there is a possible link between the burn of the mark and the heat of the of the feeling. We also know that the affixing of marks with a not iron could also be used as a punishment. An example of this practice is cited by an ostracon dated to the reign of Francis VI and coming from Dara Medina. Uh, this is the only source about iron mark 
as I remarks as punishment, but it's really interesting. The text reports the argument between the scribe Pazer and the artist Nebnefer, which ends with Nebnefer's conviction to a very strong punishment. Uh, the text reads, give him 100 blows with sticks and 10 iron marks. In this case, the use of red irons is obvious. The sanction is indeed both physical, therefore painful, and social, because the traces of the punishment are lasting and visible. One of the problems with the human branding practice is that we don't have any archaeological information about that and we don't have a lot of images about, uh, about the same practice. The only one or the most referred image about uh, human branding is the, the image shown at the beginning of this presentation. So the scene uh, represented on the walls of the Medimita temples. And the interpretation of this scene remain uncertain. This scene belongs to a series of reliefs concerning the military campaign of Ramses III against the, uh, the Sea People, uh, the War of the Year 8 that we can find on the outside wall north on the Temple of Medinetabu. Here there is a representation of the battle and the following scenes of capture, deportation and registration of prisoners of war. In these scenes, it is immediately visible the contrast between the disorder, so the battle, and the order, deportation, and subsequent scenes. The contrast between the disorder and the order was an aspect very dear to Egyptian, who made it explicit in the contrast between Maat and Isafet. Analyzing these scenes, um, uh, the French scholar Bernadette Menu identified 10 narrative segments bearing information on social integration of prisoners. She observes how the prisoners pass from a condition of disorder to one of order, a change which is favored at first by the army and then by the scribes. At the beginning of the scene, the prisoners are tied up and brought by the soldiers, and they show an unruly attitude and a level of submission that becomes more and more evident across the representation. Indeed, some of them, next to the scribe, in charge to their registration, are freed from ropes and mark neatly towards the Egyptian officers, who, with a sort of calamus in the hand, mark them on the shoulder. They are then recorded by the scribe other scribes on documents kept in some boxes just behind them. This registration and the subsequent attitude of the former prisoners indicate their integration into the Egyptian system. They sit in groups behind two standing compatriots and seem to receive orders. As we don't have any archaeological attestation, it's difficult to establish the shape of branding irons. Um, here we have we can see the brazier that is evident between the officer and uh, the, uh, the prisoners. But in, but inside this brazier we can see long needles, uh, very different from the branding seen um, uh, used for the cattle branding. This is why sometimes um, some scholars um, try to uh, interpret this scene more like a tattooing scene uh, than a branding scene. To sum up, words used for the action of branding humans are ab, as in the case of animals, but also the word menesh, used as a verb. Ab refers to the technique of affixing by using the eat, uh, and menesh refers to the cartoon shape of the brand. Ab means to mark with a not iron, but also carries the metaphorical meaning to hear mark. The force of fixing of the mark is used both as a punishment and as a means of organization. At the end of this investigation, we can draw some preliminary conclusion about the fire branding of humans and in particular of prisoners of war. 
it can be considered that prisoners were actually forced to undergo this treatment. Putting the pharaoh's name on the bodies of prisoners had both a practical and an ideological significance. This action made it possible to ratify the transition to the status of serfs subject to the pharaoh, whose um, printed name they bear on their bodies, and at the same time to determine in a permanent and uh, visible uh, way uh, the status of these people. This conclusion may be partly valid also for the marks affixed as punishment, since the external signs were persistent and evident. The value of durability and flagrance, specific to the capital branding, um, are also pursued in the text with, with, which uses the metaphor of affixing marks to signify submission to someone's will or influence, so uh, in the metaphorical meaning of the verb ab. The importance of the action of branding people um, is, um, is very important for the scholar uh, Bernadette Menu uh, for the representation of the passage from the prisoners um, in the prisoner's condition from the status of disorder to order and their insertion in a new uh, in a new frame of life. Through the gesture of writing, they are both marked on the shoulder and recorded on the list, probably drawn up to serve as directories of workers. Um, even if we can consider that human branding uh, could exist in some a specific condition like those of, of prisoners of war, um, it's difficult to give a, de a definitive interpretation for the marking scene of Medine Tabu. Um, we can also apply for uh, some semi-permanent marks in this, uh, in this case. However, as the durability and visibility of the pharaoh's brand uh, should be, in our op opinion, the central message of this representation, uh, an element which is also found in the text of the same period, the artist focused mainly on this aspect. The presence of the brazers, brazer refer to the ma fire marking of the cactus and the needles more to the tattooing action, but the practical aspect of the branding with a not Hiram and the painful uh, and his painful realization uh, should make this technique, so the uh, fire branding, the most suitable for registering prisoners. And so thanks for your attention.